King Arthur is, has been approached by his cousin Kiluch, and Kiluch is trying to win the hand of a uh, of a, a young lady, uh, Olwen, her name is. And during that story, during that process, he's set these tasks to do these impossible tasks, and they are to plough an entire field in only one day. And this field was huge; it was massive. To be able to plant uh, seeds where it would be impossible for him to do. But Arthur gets all his knights together and they have all these superpowers, these knights. They can talk to animals, they can breathe underwater, they're the strongest person on earth. And he gets them all together to help Kiluch. So it's like the 12 tasks of Hercules, if you like. And he, he, he undertakes that. And then one of the tasks is to retrieve the comb and the scissors, which are uh, Celtic um, images of uh, being a chieftain to get this comb and scissors off the head of this enchanted giant wild boar. And in doing that, they chase the wild boar. The wild boar is that big, he jumps into the sea from Ireland and swims across the channel here to Wales and jumps up under these hills and mountains you see behind us. And as they're up there, they battle around here to try and get this uh, wild boar. And Arthur loses some of his sons in the battle and the wild boar loses some of its offspring in the battle. And they keep chasing it across Wales and until they reach the Severn River and the boar jumps back in the Severn but, but Bedivere manages just to grasp the comb and the, the scissors off the top of the wild boar and the last we see this wild boar swimming back out to sea all by self never to be seen again. And that kind of aspect I suppose that uh, these tasks need to be undertaken is exactly what we see here. There are lots of tasks to do in this place and we see that drive, that sense of purpose being able to drive through it, so they're on a quest, on a grail, if you like. So the uh, quest for the students to come in is to come in, find who they are, and this place helps them find who they are, what their place is in the quest, if you like, what superpowers they have to enable them to undertake their own quest. And I like using that story to, and we may even intersperse the names of the students we have as the names of Arthur's knights as we come through. So instead of talking about uh, uh, Bedwyr and Kiloch and everybody will use the names of the students that we have as part of their, uh, their story and help them understand that although yes we are here the same place as where this story happened uh, hundreds of years ago it's now their story it's now their time and uh, it's now their place right here right now and in hundreds of years time maybe people will be telling stories about them being here in this place as well. My life was a bit of a mess, I think it's fair to say. I, um, I really struggled in school. I got, uh, I got kicked out. I ended up um, getting restrained and uh, arrested quite a lot um, because I was struggling dealing with the classroom and, and stuff like that. And then finally I, uh, I found out about this place. I applied and I got it, and it's um, it's been brilliant. I haven't been uh, restrained once. I haven't been arrested once. Um, things are so much better. Before I came, I said that um, I was either going to end up in jail or in a ditch, and uh, here I still am. So. Farming is an amazing way to uh, achieve our practical skills therapeutic education curriculum because it engages the, the heart, the hand and the head and it allows people to really focus on what they're doing which is great for someone who's got um, ADHD or autism spectrum disorder because it allows them to really engage with the task. Also, in terms of um, a Steiner methodology, when you engage with your hands doing something practical, you're 
allowing yourself to re-step. So some of our students have had a gap in their sort of seven year rhythmical cycle where perhaps they haven't really moved much in their horizontal or sagittal or vertical plane. So allowing them to do farm work means that they're really grounded in themselves. So the best tool to use on a farm is really the wheelbarrow because it requires balance, it requires concentration and focus. It also means that you're, you're not just doing um, a meaningless activity. So um, some provisions might expect their students to just build a wall and then knock it down at the end of the day. What we're doing is we're working to support the land. We're working with our students who are actually really integral to the running of the farm. And without the students, we couldn't farm. So their presence here is vital, really. Horticulture in specific, I think, uh, is good because uh, you have a lot of variety of jobs. So um, we have got some job for any student that comes um, and for any ability. So we're starting with sieving soil and handwork, hand tools and sowing seeds. Uh, but we have jobs that go all the way up to um, tractor driving or uh, using farm machinery. So it's really easy to find something for the students to engage in. And um, that is what the students also like. When they come here, they know there's something they can do that's meaningful and that is useful for the day when we grow the vegetables. So they know the jobs are important. It's not just a job that is there for them to be engaged in something. It's actually a job that needs doing to, to bring the enterprise on, to grow the area, make it more productive and other people depend on our produce. As much as possible we'll use all the produce from the farm, so everything from horticulture, things that have been grown out in the garden and all the meat that's produced on the farm. Uh, it allows the students to see the full circle of everything they do. So they plant the seeds, they grow the crops, they look after the animals and then they get the end product in the kitchen um, which yeah, finishes the circle for them, the whole seed table, it's the end product. Um, they're involved in the whole thing then, right from planting to chopping and cooking and serving. To be able to produce a range of things with a limited resource I think is really good for the students because it means they have to sometimes think outside the box. They might have seen recipes or things on TV that they want to try and They'll come and suggest it and I will say, well, actually, that's not feasible. And it's a, a real life understanding of actually working with what you have, working within the environment that you are in with what's local and seasonal. And it gives them a bit more of a broader sense of the world and not necessarily being just like, oh, I can go off to the supermarket and I can buy whatever I want and cook it. Just because there's a recipe that's a recipe, you, they don't have to 100% fulfill that. You can alter it and it still works. I started in the Iron Forge in, last July and I was supporting the students in all different sessions and I really enjoyed the Iron Forge. I enjoyed how you can work with like hard metal so easily when it's hot and all the different things that you can create. Um, so then I've recently become the Forge Tutor and I think it's great because every day I can do different techniques with all the different students and they can make lots of different crafts. And I think it's really exciting and fun. Um, to start off, they um, split logs and split wood down to little, like, like this kind of size and you put them in a big barrel and we use that to make the charcoal here and then they use the charcoal in the forge to create the heat for the metal so that they can use the heated metal to shape all of their different designs. And I think it's really important that they see the step-by-step -step process. So they can come in and they can say, I want to create a coat hook and I say to them, well, I'd like you to draw the design that you wish. And then we work out all the measurements, all the different skills from like the hand saw to chiseling, to hole punching, to hammering. There's lots of different techniques that they all use. Because normally you just go out to a shop and you buy things and you don't appreciate 
all the hard effort that's gone into it, but here they've got to do all that themselves and I think that's really good. Everything they make here is, is for a purpose and it gets used, whether it's here for themselves or for the community. Everyone, has, and if everyone benefits from it. In today's modern society, lots of things happen quickly and instantly, an instant gratification, and students and society is used to that, instead of having to appreciate the work and the time that goes into it. Well, wood is a natural material. Wood is less forgiving than metal, because with metal you can bend easier and it's more flexible. You can weld it back together. Wood, once you take the material off, you can't put it back on so easy. It's a much more natural material. There the students can go out with me and they can harvest the wood and I invite them to look at the, what they're going to make in the wood and to find that piece and then to cut that piece and to bring it back here and to work it so that it actually transforms by them imposing their will on the material into the finished product. For me, with performing arts, it's about playing to, playing to people's strengths. So if they're good at drumming or they're good at singing or they're good at songwriting or playing the ukulele or um, acting, any of those things, encouraging and developing those skills, but at the same time also challenging people to come out of their comfort zones. So those students who find it difficult to engage with um, emotions, whether it be their own emotions or other people's emotions, help them to try and recognise and portray what those emotions are through acting skills or to, to look at um, a play or a, a, a speech or a song about existence, about life, um, and try to help them to, to engage with those things creatively. The genus look I really looks at uh, what's here and looks at the influence that the place itself has on the people and on its uh, and how the surroundings influences what we do and how we feel. So for here in Plastubul a lot of the genus loci stems from the history of the place, from the stories of the place. It stems from our actual surroundings and the environment around us. The very fact that we here in the Preseli Hills plays a big impact on what we do and how we deliver our curriculum. What we do here is based around the farm work with all the crafts coming from um, so the wool from the sheep and being able to follow those um, crafts through from start to finish uh, uh, are able, enable our students to be able to get a rhythm and get a sense of belonging in the place as well. So what we do, we instill that sense of being here, that sense of uh, this is where they belong in what they do. Um, and they do that by taking part and learning stories, listening to the sounds, smelling the air, feeling the air that's around us, all uh, impacting um, on how they view where they are and how they feel at that time. I think this place is amazing, you know, you know working with the land, working with the animals, um, actually seeing making a difference, you know, you, you just for example when you're making the, the crops in the field you you plant the seed you look after it then you transplant it and you see it grow and you look after it you weed it you put a lot of care into it and in the end what happens is you end up with an amazing uh, produce that you can either sell or eat yourself and it just feels good it feels uh, amazing that you've actually accomplished something and you, you know you have, you can see what you've accomplished. The same with the animals and the same with the iron forge and the green woodwork and things like that. Horticulture in itself wouldn't be very useful just as an activity by itself. It's really connected to the kitchen, to the farm and to the whole um, place here because the students um, see the whole process and just working in horticulture again I don't think they would get as much from but by delivering the produce to the kitchen and seeing what they have grown on their dinner plates uh, it becomes a lot more tangible how what they are doing and why they are doing it and why it is important and uh, the same with the farm, 
when they are mucking out the cows and taking out the manure, um, they might not understand why that is useful or why they are doing it. But if they come to horticulture and they see the, the manure going into the ground, the plants growing, and then the cycle back to the kitchen. Physical skill improvement is uh, stamina, fine motor skills and gross motor skills. Uh, knowing, com knowing when to stop, understanding tension and compression, coordination. The social one is being able to have appropriate conversations, being able to ask for help, being able to follow instructions and if they don't understand instructions they can then come back and ask for clarification. Uh, and then at the end of it, they then have a sense of self-worth because they've produced an item that they can either take with them and use in their house or they can give it away. In the kitchen, the major difference from the other workshops is the students have their end goal of the day to produce the meal has to be done within the time frame. There's no scope for leaving it to do for the next session. It has to be done, people need to be served, so they have to work to a time scale. Um, there's a set routine we work to every day, so they arrive, we prep the vegetables, we then cook, we then lay the tables, then we serve, and then there's clean down in the afternoon. So there's a full regular routine that happens in the workshop. Everybody knows what's happening when, pretty much, and um, yeah, they, get to, they have to work within that time frame, which is, I think, the biggest thing for most of them. They, most students really, really like that, that it's regimented and they know they have to finish. Um, it seems to boost confidence and ability. They, pay more, they seem to pay a lot of attention to detail and um, methods and be able to remember them and redo them over and over again after a short period of tuition rather than maybe needing constant help to get through a project in another workshop. We follow what's known as, um, as I said before, practical skills therapeutic education and that's um, split into three separate areas of work. So the first area is called work readiness, the second is community inclusion and the third is health and well-being. So with work readiness we're trying to teach our students about how to look after the animals, so they'll be um, looking after the cows, learning about their welfare. It helps for some students with learning difficulties, actually caring for another being allows them to understand how to better care for themselves, um, so that's really important. Um, and then the community inclusion side is that because we're a small scale farm, there's 100 acres, um, we do everything either with very small tractors or as a big team. So working as a team um, is really great you know, in any social situation and it allows the students to realise that everybody has a different role to play and their role is as important as anybody else's. And then the health and wellbeing strand, um, especially in a farm context, is all about not only caring for your own health and wellbeing but those of your peers. So, for example, last winter we were planting hedges and we were clearing and we were making loads of wood chips so the students needed to have an awareness of where they were in proximity to other people and they also needed to um, make sure that they were safe in order for the whole, for us to plant trees safely. I think it's important for the students that we provide challenges here for them and that is from the environment. So where we are based with the weather, with the openness, um, which is challenging for some students. But also each job has got a challenge in itself. And we're trying to give the students a challenge that is right for them. And the students are looking for the challenges because they are teenagers. And that's an age where usually people like to challenge themselves or we try to give them that challenge and by, by going through that process 
they come out stronger and more self-confident and more in a positive way because they met some sort of resistance and overcame it and came out stronger on the other side. In terms of projects that I've been involved with for National Theatre of Wales, for lots of different schools um, and colleges, is really encouraging young people to connect with their history and connect with their future. So to express certain things in their history that may be difficult um, and emotionally challenging or frustrating or oppressive, um, getting them to connect with that, to write about that, to express that creatively um, and to, in order to kind of own it and to, to move forward but also to look for the positive in the world and the positive in life um, and the positive in other people and other cultures. If, if we find what is at the core of the place and by doing that we're looking back uh, to, to the geological formation of the place itself, we then base our crafts, base our sessions around that and it has that sense of being right. This is where this needs to happen, this is where this belongs. If we were to put a craft in here for instance, uh, glass blowing, there's not been any interest or history of glass blowing in the area so it would just it, it has a sense of feeling wrong being done here. Whereas we're looking at uh, craft for the wool, the blacksmith, the animal care and the uh, land management itself, things that are actually helpful to where we are as well. And that then forms and drives that curriculum forward, drives those workshops forward, formulates that central rhythm, that, if you like. So the rhythm of this place is dictated by the needs of the farm. Every, every morning the animals need feeding, they need watering. We need to look at to see wh where, um, which um, fields they're in. Off that comes the need to do the fencing, off that needs to how we produce the animal feed. All these rhythms at different times of the year provide that curriculum for us. Off of those then we get those other um, aspects, the craft. So with the wool we've got to shear the sheep, but to shear the sheep we have to raise the sheep in the first place. And we shear the sheep, but then we work with the wool, we wash it, and then we process it. So we're making felt, we're making uh, yarn, and then being able to use the yarn into uh, other aspects as well. So each one of those things will come off that one central core craft, if you like. Rhythm is in everything, you know, we all have a heartbeat. We all have a heartbeat, you know, from, night, from when we're in our mother's wombs. And, you know, the original, drums and the original form of communication um, from the African continent obviously where mankind was born is, is, is drums so to me whether you're planting seeds or you're playing rugby or you're um, working on the farm whether you're milking a goat whatever you're doing rhythm is an important part of that and developing your rhythm and your balance and it's also a part of our connection to other people working out where other people fit into the rhythm of, of, our, of our lives. Often they look a lot more healthy uh, after two years than when they first arrived or after one year even. The college timetable is quite rhythmic and they know where they are and what's happening and that seems to be really grounding and therefore they don't have to worry about what might happen, they can just concentrate on their work and um, themselves. Um, the social skills develop throughout the year and that's a lot to do with rhythm and repetition as well. So if you have a student that doesn't like to communicate much and doesn't like to greet others or to even interact with others, then we give them small achievable tasks just like greeting their tutor every day or their support worker or a fellow student and just by repeating it over and over again over one or two years uh, it becomes second nature and the students are able to, um, to do it afterwards without thinking about it. Some students I have one day a week and some of them I've had three days a week and one student themselves has really enjoyed this session 
and they want to start their own forge in their garden and they're looking into doing that because they really, they really benefit from the forge sessions here. Plasterable is quite often used uh, by Ruskin Mill Trust as an alternative environment to where students come from. So whether they're coming from London, from Birmingham, from quite uh, urban settings, and being placed here puts them out of their normal sense of where they are. So it makes them reset, makes them think to themselves, hang on, how do I cope with this? Things from at night, being able to look up at night and see stars, because there is no light pollution from the cities. You can see the stars. You're not always hearing cars and things passing by. So that forms quite a, a big process here at Plaster Hall. And what we do as well is around the farm, there are certain places with, and they feel different and they sound different. And students will access those places if they need to feel enclosed and quiet. They can be down by the clay retrieval where everything seems walled off and you, you feel enclosed. Or if you need to breathe and just be able to look up and look out and not to feel claustrophobic. You walk through the first gate and the hill is spread out in front of you and you get that sense of air um, in what you do. Here, the environment itself is quite encompassing. It sort of, it sort of gives you a big hug as, as you come here. And it, it just feels different. We even use the, the environment and the surroundings. So we have students now who engage in more outdoor pursuits activities where they're actually on the hills, they're actually uh, along the coast, they're in the forests, and to get that sense of belonging here uh, instilled in them so that they can access learning by knowing where they are and knowing that they can be safe, that they can be comfortable, and they can be supported. I really want to continue helping um, other students who come through and feel like they they're not worth anything or feel like they're struggling too much and I want to be able to tell them that this works, this place helps and I was in their position. I, I knew what it was like to struggle and feel like you're completely worthless and now I feel like I'm worth something and I feel like I can share that with future students. Mm -hmm.